If you cannot see with your own two eyes what is happening out there to this economy, uh, to the direction of this country, uh, what's going to happen to the standard of living, what's going to happen to our currency, uh, what's going to happen to these markets, stock, bond, and real estate. If you cannot see it by now, uh, you, you will be a casualty. Saturday, April 16th, 2022. A lot to talk about today. Before we start the video, please, please make sure to share these videos. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're not getting notifications, make sure you hit the bell notification down below so that you are alerted with the newest videos. Also, some people have reached out. They're getting contacted uh, by somebody using my name and face on WhatsApp. This is very, very common. Uh, you've seen the bots down below. This is happening to numerous channels. Let me remind everybody, I don't even have a WhatsApp. I'm not on WhatsApp. Uh, I'm not here selling anybody anything. I'm not giving out my phone number. I'm, uh, I'm not in the comments trying to sell you cryptos. Uh, so these are bots. They've hit numerous channels. Ignore them. And if anybody is trying to sell you anything down below, ignore it uh, and ignore anything uh, in regards to WhatsApp. But without further ado, as I said, we have a lot to talk about today. I want to get right into it. I received a phone call yesterday from a friend of mine who manages a handful of pawn shops. I'm not going to say where, but they are in Southern California. And he was alarmed um, with the amount of people coming in and pawning items. He says in the last four weeks, it, it has exploded where people are coming in, pawning items, needing money. And he said that uh, one day uh, this week, it was literally a record-breaking amount of money that they lent out. And he, he says that over the last year or so, it, it's just been dead. But now, all of a sudden, there's this surge of people coming in needing money. So, I, you know, we, we watch uh, what's happening on the television and we watch this manipulation of markets and people telling us everything's going to be okay. But... You know, when we look at just what is happening locally, uh, talk to a business owner, talk to talk to somebody that owns a restaurant, talk to somebody who owns a pawn shop, and uh, if they're honest with you, they're worried. They're very worried with what they're seeing. But I thought that this was a real bellwether uh, to what is happening right here. This is a real canary in the coal mine. Now the money is running out or has run out for so many people already, and now they're resorting uh, to the pawn shops. Uh, maybe the, maybe they've already tapped out the credit cards. Maybe they don't have credit cards. So now they're resorting uh, to the pawn shops. And I thought that this was a real, real bellwether that I wanted to share uh, with all of you. Also, I had a subscriber contact me this morning and, and he wrote me saying that last night he was notified by his bank uh, about some charges. And so he went online to his, his online banking account and noticed that there were multiple charges at gas stations. And there were 11 charges in all, a total of $935. And all this took place uh, in a 45 minute time frame. So he got a hold of somebody at his bank and they said that they're going to investigate this and they will refund his money after the investigation uh, in around two weeks. And this gentleman now is out of $935 while this investigation takes place. And if everything works out, he'll hopefully get uh, reimbursed his $935. And uh, this was not... Uh, because of a credit card, this is his debit card he used. And so um, at least with a credit card, uh, they reimburse you pretty quickly. I mean, immediately, really. Um, but with the debit card, now it's a two-week investigation and you don't get reimbursed until after the investigation. And I bring this up 
because we, we, we speak so much about protecting your money, protecting your assets. How safe is your money in the bank? What if this was $9,000 or $29,000? Uh, you could easily, I mean, if, if you're out of that money for weeks at a time, and hopefully you get it back and you get reimbursed, but in the meantime, if you have bills to pay and you need that $930, Five dollars, or you need that nine thousand dollars to to make payroll or to pay for bills, whatever it may be, to make that mortgage payment, uh, you could be out. And, and so there is a huge counterparty risk now with all this technology out there. How easy it is now to access your bank account. We know people can copy debit cards and credit cards at machines and ATMs. And uh, you know the bank isn't taking uh, the responsibility that it once did. Uh, before it'd be like, hey, no problem. We, we we see what's going on here. We're going to reimburse your account immediately. Now now it's weeks, and sometimes uh, some of these banks are are taking no responsibility at all. They're they're putting it on you, and you could be totally out. So I bring this up because I just want to re-emphasize the importance of being your own bank. And remember, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. If all your money is sitting on a computer or sitting somewhere on a bank's computer because literally your money's not even in the bank vault anymore. Uh, so many people writing me saying that they couldn't cash checks at the bank, uh, they couldn't cash a $3,000 check or a five or a 10 or a $20,000 check, they had to order the money. Uh, I, I can tell you that's happened to me multiple times over the years and many banks just say, hey, we will not cash anything over $4,000. Some banks will. Some banks will cash a $20,000 check. Some banks won't. Some banks will limit that to three or $4,000. Many banks just don't have the cash in their vaults, so they have to order it. And I know there are a lot of people out there that don't believe that. Maybe you haven't tried cashing a $5,000 check lately. Uh, hopefully your bank will allow you to do that. Many banks now don't because they don't have the cash on hand. So if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Uh, I think it's smart just to keep enough in the bank to pay the bills. If you're gonna keep more than that, diversify, keep it in multiple banks. But how safe are the banks, ladies and gentlemen? And now with all this technology, how quick somebody can get into your bank account, wipe you out, it's very, very dangerous. Also, I went to the grocery store yesterday. I went to Winco, a humongous grocery store out here, and I, and I love the store. But uh, bacon from about two weeks ago to yesterday, up nearly 60 cents. Nearly 60 cents in two weeks. Uh, I like to get the uh, V8 uh, tomato juice and vegetable juices, and they have a greens uh, that V8 has. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of green vegetables. And I noticed that now they don't carry the larger bottle. They, they shrunk the bottle down to about literally maybe half the size. Same price, $3.61. So, so the bottle is literally... Um, I'd say 35 to 50% smaller and the price is the same. I, I mean, it's absolutely shocking what is going on. And, you know, if you're not paying attention, you'd never know that a, a lot of the bacon packages are now 10 ounces, 12 ounces, and they're charging you the same or more. Uh, V8 juice, half the size, charging you the same price. Uh, there's just so much shrinkflation taking place. And, and you know, I'd be, I, I think people are really beginning to notice this, that the the food isn't stretching as far or as long in the in the household, whereas it's like, oh, you, you know, you could go week to week um, going to the grocery store. Now you're running out, you, you know, five, six days in instead of seven days. The food's not going as far. And you're noticing that the grocery bill is getting bigger, but the food isn't stretching as long uh, uh, for the week in the household. So it's really, really um amazing to see what is happening and how is it really going to affect the average consumer. CNBC, here's how much the same mortgage costs now compared to last year. Rates uh, have now been spiking, ladies and gentlemen. We're sitting, I think, at about 5.07% uh, on a 30-year fixed, and it's going to go much higher. Uh, I, I think we're no doubt going to be blowing past 6% this summer. Um, this is the highest we've seen the 30-year uh, since 2011. A year ago, the 30-year rate averaged 3.04%, just a year ago, which is nearly 
2% lower than it is today. That 2% adds hundreds of dollars to the monthly cost of financing a home, making it unaffordable for so many people now. And this is just the beginning. And in this article, it gives an example. It says, take a home worth $408,000, which is the medium home price in the US. Think about that. $408,000 is now the median home price in America. A 30-year fixed mortgage at 5% interest uh, with 20% down, you're paying $1,752 per month. And let's face it, uh, many people are not putting 20% down. They're doing Freddie and Fannie loans with 3% down. And as I've said uh, from the past video, uh, a lot of people don't have a whole lot of skin in the game. And we talked about, uh, you, you know, the 2008 crisis. A lot of people blamed it on subprime loans. But are we not really doing subprime loans right now when all they're requiring for a Freddie, Freddie or Fannie uh, loan is 3%? 3%. That's not a lot of skin in the game, is it? So uh, $12,000, you could buy median uh, priced home in the US with, with $12,000 down. That's not a whole lot of money. Uh, and a lot of people uh, are not putting a whole lot of skin in the game. But going back to this, so you're paying $1,752 uh, per month for mortgage costs. A year ago, when the rate was at 3.04%, you'd be paying $1,383. That's uh, $4,400 less a year than you're paying right now. So think about that. So the same house, same loan, but now since rates have shifted, you're gonna pay $4,400 more per year than you did a year ago. $1,383 per month now turns into $1,752 per month. And again, this is just the beginning. What happens when it goes to 6%, six and a half, seven? You see where this is all going. And you see why this housing bubble uh, has, I think, reached its epitome. And I think we're beginning to see the air taken out of it. Now it's a matter of when this bubble gets pricked, when it pops, uh, and, and when the whole thing begins to implode and what is going to set it off. I think it will be interest rates slash inflation. Bloomberg, housing market fever starts to break in Boise. This on Bloomberg uh, today. Typical home values in Boise, uh, Idaho rose just 0.4% last month down from a 4.1% monthly pace in June, according to Zillow data, uh, making it the, the, the first of the country's top 100 housing markets to flirt with falling prices this year. So we'll see how it plays out there in Boise. Boise home uh, prices are now above 70% uh, higher than what the median household income of the city's residents say they can afford. This, this whole thing is so out of whack. It must collapse, ladies and gentlemen. It, this thing has gotten so far out of control. It's priced so many people out. It's allowed so much institutional money to come in here, create this massive bubble, uh, and really do such a disservice to the American people uh, and manipulate this, this housing bubble. When the momentum turns, it will be the, the areas that had these massive bubbles created, uh, these massive um, property values explode, these will be the same areas that are going to get hit first and they will get hit the hardest. Places like Boise, uh, places uh, out here in Riverside County, Orange County, places like Phoenix, places in Florida, these areas where we saw this uh, just record-breaking FOMO take place, record-breaking skyrocketing home prices, uh, sales, construction. These will be the first places hit. They will be the hardest places hit. So keep your eyes on the ball, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see a lot of things take place this summer. Wall Street Journal, credit card spending belies consumers. This is uh, a very interesting article. If you uh, get a chance, check it out. But uh, in this article, uh, again, they're just reiterating what we've been talking about uh, for the past year. 
and and really the the past couple of weeks where we're getting uh, some of the data now with this massive skyrocketing amount of credit card use us consumers say they aren't feeling good about the economy but yet yeah, we're seeing record breaking uh, 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 amounts of people using credit cards. Now, is that because they have to or because they want to? Uh, I can tell you right now, this weekend, we've got Coachella Fest. They're expecting 750,000 people out here in the Valley for this weekend and next weekend's Coachella Fest. Now, you know as well as I do that most, most people are gonna slap this on the credit cards. They're getting on flights, they're staying at hotels, they're renting cars, they're putting gas in the cars, they're going out to eat. Uh, so I think it's $650 for a weekend pass. 750,000 people will be out here for the next two weekends to uh, come to this satanic ritual, and that's really what it is. Uh, there's, to me, it's not even really a music event anymore, it's just a gigantic sa satanic ritual, and people uh, are going to use their credit cards to come out here to be entertained uh, uh, at Coachella Fest and slap it on the card. Hotels, gas, meals, you name it. And and so we, we still have people out there that just say they can't pay down debt, uh, they can't buy any gold, they can't buy any silver, um, but they're, they're dependent on these credit cards for entertainment, to come to Coachella Fest, uh, to take a vacation, to go to Vegas. And, and there's no doubt many are using credit cards to pay essentials, to go to the grocery store, they're using a credit card, to pay rent, they're using a credit card, to pay for the auto repair, they're using the credit card, the urgent care visit, credit card. And so um, people are really going to get themselves in a bind here and they're doing a good job right now doing that. Citigroup credit card spending up 23% from a year ago. That's what Citigroup sees. Uh, spending rose 29% uh, on, on JP Morgan Chase cards, 33% on Wells Fargo cards. So is this people going to dinner, going out to the bars, going to Coachella Fest, or is this people paying rent, paying grocery bills, uh, paying utilities, or is it a combination of both? People just cannot stop spending. And because of it, many are now forced and, re and reliant and dependent on credit cards just to pay for essentials. But I would love to see the number of people who are out here at the weed shops using, um, well, I guess at weed shops, you got, you got to use cash, right? But they're using it at the restaurants and the hotels, the resorts, you know, many of them uh, used those credit cards to buy those $650 passes, to rent the cars, to buy the airline tickets, et cetera. I really wish we could see the breakdown and see how many people uh, ran up their credit cards uh, here at Coachella Fest. 750,000 people out here, yet we know for a fact, just going through the data, 50% of this country doesn't even have $1,000 saved up. Uh, what was it, 44% of this country doesn't even have $400 saved up. Uh, the, the numbers are staggering, yet people are spending money like drunken sailors, and, and it just goes on and on and on. And these people out here at the giant satanic ritual here this weekend, how prepared are they? If the lights went out tomorrow, if, a, if their grid went down, if a cyber attack happened, if they couldn't get to the ATM, if their little plastic credit card uh, did not work, what would they do? What kind of training do they have? What kind of skill set do they have? Uh, could they survive? Do they have food put away? Uh, these people are the people we're talking about every day. Day. These are the most unprepared people. And how many of these people, and most of these people are under 30 years old. Uh, and I guess if you don't have to pay your college loan debt, you can just go out and go to concerts and go out to dinner and fly around the country because uh, you have no obligation now to pay your eighty and hundred thousand dollar tuition debt because it's uh, been extended yet again, right? And maybe uh, they're just going to forgive it and 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 tag it on to the taxpayers. So isn't that just an uh, an incredible thing? Uh, what a lesson in life, right? Like you can run up a hundred thousand dollars in college tuition, one moratorium after another moratorium after another moratorium, and maybe we'll just forgive it. So hey, why not just go spend three or four thousand uh, dollars this weekend out here at the Valley? and uh, go to Coachella Fest and stay at a nice hotel, eat really good because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to pay your bills. It's an incredible, 
incredible uh, time that we're living in, and what kind of message does this send to the majority uh, of people in this country? Just but literally, life is a video game to people, and you know, people are out here doing drugs, and you know, they're at the ritual of Coachella fast, and they're just in fantasy land. They're living in this illusion. They're literally living in a video game, not prepared for for any realistic type events taking place uh, in this country. Uh, they're completely unprepared for any financial downturn in this country. Uh, they've been allowed to just not pay their bills. Many of them probably had rent that they didn't even pay. So we are living in this fake utopia, but I live in a real uh, utopia. You live in the real utopia. Uh, we live in real life. And I, I'm not sure if I should say it's a utopia, but, but I live in the real world. Live, I live in real life just like you. Uh, so yesterday uh, I got this. I don't know if you could see that. Um, SD Bullion. This came in yesterday. And uh, these were the two gold buffaloes that I ordered last, last week, week and a half ago. And so those came in uh, yesterday. And there's something to say about holding something real. There's something about holding a real piece of silver or a real piece of gold in your hands, especially now with everything that is taking place. We see what's happening in Eastern Europe. Uh, we, we see the importance of, of not keeping all your money in the bank, uh, how quickly it can be stolen, how quickly it can be controlled, manipulated, and just shut down. Whether you're a country or an individual, this is the stuff right now that you better be looking at. And we are learning a, a lesson daily uh, of why it is so important to hold real assets like gold and silver. Uh, we see the control and the power uh, of countries and how they can control other countries um, monetarily by controlling the money and controlling the computers and controlling the central banks. But when a country holds this in their vaults or when you hold this in your vaults, nobody can control it. It has no counterparty risk. And we're learning that uh, ask Venezuela if they'd like to have their gold back from the Bank of England. They should have never put that gold in the Bank of England. Now, because that, the Bank of England doesn't like their leadership or their government, they say, we're going to keep your gold. Uh, America holding uh, tons of German gold here. Why are we not giving it back? Uh, we've seen now that Russia now is going to try and do more with gold. China going to do more with gold. India going to do more with gold. We... Uh, we see the people in Venezuela shaving grams, just shaving gold, just to get the just to get a couple grams of gold so they can go get a haircut or go buy some food. We're seeing the importance now of getting away from fiat monopoly money and holding real things, but holding them not in other people's vaults, but in our own vaults. And I'm not going to get political. Uh, I think war, as I've said, is a horrible thing, and I hope things get resolved quickly over uh, in Eastern Europe. But it's probably not going to happen. And now, because of all this, we're going to see the importance of gold in why nations and central banks across the globe have been stockpiling it. Why? What did they know? And we're, we, we, we've seen all of this manipulation uh, of money over the last couple months uh, throughout different countries and how countries, not just people, but countries can be shut down. Personal accounts can be shut down. You know what? Nobody knows where this is at. Nobody knows where it's stored. Nobody knows anything. After, the, after this video, nobody knows where this goes. Nobody knows what I have. Nobody knows what you have. So I just think with everything we're seeing, the volatility, the uncertainty, uh, the propping up of, of every uh, fiat currency in the world, the, the overprinting, the manipulation. Uh, here in the, in the U.S., having the world reserve currency, we've been using it to literally enslave uh, much of the world. We've used it to start wars, control countries, uh, control markets, and manipulate markets. Uh, that ends when more and more countries decide to go to this. And I think that we're going to see the involvement of gold uh, with India, with China, with Russia, and numerous other countries become uh, more and more apparent. 
and they're going to be it, it they are now literally forced to get out of the dollar they see the entrapment the enslavement and the danger of the dollar and how how control how much control uh, the U.S. has of other countries with regards to the U.S. dollar. And now countries want to dump it. They want to get out of it. And it's going to happen. Not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, next week, or even next year. But we are on that road now where other countries want to use their own currencies. Many would love to see a gold-backed currency. Could that be the yuan? It's very, very possible. Could it be a uh, a, a digital currency backed by gold very very possible all i know is this deep in my heart i believe that the u.s dollar is on borrowed time it's going to change and the world is just sick uh, of the u.s printing money out of thin air while they have to you know um be forced to buy everything with u.s dollars and especially oil right every literally uh, most of this country, I don't have the exact uh, percentage, but most of this country is forced to buy oil in U.S. dollars. Wouldn't they rather use their own currencies? Wouldn't they rather want to use a currency backed by this? And if things get really bad, we're going to see countries just use gold. Uh, they'll just, uh, they may not be able to, to use it electronically because of all the restrictions, but that doesn't stop a country from Russia, like Russia, China, India, etc., from putting gold on an airplane and just flying it to a central bank in another country for goods and services. So we're gonna see a lot happening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think you're doing yourself a disservice to just uh, be holding paper, whether that's just stocks or whether that's just cash. I think you're doing a disservice not holding real things. That's not financial advice. I don't give financial advice. That's my humble opinion. That's how I look at it. I think it's great to be holding gold, silver, to be holding some cash. As you know, next month I'm heading to the south to look at acreage. And, and so I'm gonna try to diversify as much as I can and to carry less dollars. Wall Street Journal, decade high mortgage rates pose, pose threat to spring housing markets. Rates are rising at their fastest pace in 35 years. And, you, you know, there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, I've been talking a year, two years about leaving California. Absolutely, I have. And especially the last year with everything that's happening here, I, I've really been talking about it. But I'm not buying in a massive bubble. And this is the biggest housing bubble we have seen in history, period. Your parents' lifetime, your grand grandparents' lifetime, your lifetime. This is the biggest one. And so I, um, I am not going to be pressured into buying into a bubble. I want to see this market begin to correct before I do anything. Like you, I want to get a deal. I like sales. I buy things on sales. I don't ever pay full price for anything. And so uh, I'm not forced to do anything. I'm very comfortable where I'm at. Like I said, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about uh, being victimized. Um, very well-trained individual. I'll, I'll be okay. But I uh, certainly am not going to be victimized by this bubble either. So uh, I'm going to be patient. Y you know, I I've said to many people, patience is a virtue. This is the time. We are in a chess match, ladies and gentlemen. This is a financial chess match. Massive sales are coming. And to me, you don't want to make the wrong move um, prematurely here uh, because I think you're going to regret it. These people that bought a house in the last year or two, I think they're really going to regret what they did. And I think they're going to take huge losses. And I know everybody's feeling rich in their 401ks and they're feeling rich because of the price of their home went up 20% in the last year, maybe more. Uh, enjoy it because you don't have it in your pocket. And when this market turns, this is going to be like a bowling ball uh, being thrown out of a 757. It's going so fast so violently downhill, people just aren't going to be able to get out. And that so-called wealth that they had on paper is going to be decimated very, very quickly. Getting back to this article uh, on, on the Wall Street Journal, decade high mortgage rates pose threat to spring housing market. Again, rates are rising at the fastest pace in 35 years. And the question is, will this take us from this gangbuster type real estate market uh, to a normal market or to a collapse. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Again, 
Patience is a virtue. I'm gonna see how it plays out. A really good article I was reading last night on wallstreet.com and it's titled, After Blowing $328 Million on Share Buybacks Since 2017, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citi, Goldman Sachs, all of their stocks drop. And I bring this article up, and if you get a chance, check it out. I bring it up because we're always reassured um, by the banks that the pressure tests, they pass with flying colors. Uh, the regulators uh, find no problems with these banks. Uh, the banks have never been stronger. They've never been richer. They've never been in better shape. But $328 billion to prop up their stocks. And here we are again as their stocks uh, continue to drop. And we have to ask ourselves this question. These banks, how many of these banks are heavily invested in Russia, heavily invested in China, in these Chinese uh, real estate development companies? How many of them are invested in all this vacant commercial real estate right here in the US that these bondholders are holding? millions upon millions of square feet of vacant buildings here in America that these banks own, that, they're, that, that not a cent is being paid in rent or on a lease on these buildings. When do we begin to see the trouble, the bleeding? Uh, but I guess as long as you can buy $328 billion of your own stocks, you can keep everything propped up pretty well. Again, this is why I own stuff like this. If you trust the banks, if you trust that the US dollar is gonna be here forever, if you trust that the stock market isn't manipulated, that these financial institutions aren't manipulated, that everything's fine, that the banking system is healthy, that the, that the US dollar is healthy, if you believe all that, keep doing what you're doing. But if you believe what I believe, and that is that this system is not healthy, it's dying, it's melting down, it's, uh, it's on life support. This is why I hold real things, not promises like bonds and dollar bills. I'm not holding debt, I'm holding assets, I'm holding real money. Something that's been around 5,000 years and it's gonna be here for the next 5,000 years. Y you know, the Bible mentions gold and silver multiple times and even in, in heaven it says, there's, the streets are made of gold. God loved gold, he loved silver, it's in heaven, and it's real money. And that's why it will never be worth zero. And I can sit here and tell you one thing that is 110% sure is that gold and silver will never be worth zero. Can you say that about a crypto? Can you say that about a fiat currency? Uh, you can't. You cannot say that really about any other asset other than the two most undervalued assets on planet Earth, gold and silver. They've been here, they have, they, they've been here for 5,000 years, ladies and gentlemen. And when you leave here, and I pray to God that, that, we, that I make it up there, and that you make it up there, uh, that we're gonna see those streets of gold right up there. God loved these things, okay? So, you know, don't think like, oh, you have gold and silver, you're a materialistic person, it's all about money. No, God also gave you a brain, he gave you a soul, he gave you free will, and he's telling you to get ready and get prepared. And this is financial armor right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you better have food and water. You better have food and water before this. And before food and water, you better have security. Is your security in order, okay? You better get it, you better get your security in order before you do anything. Then get your food and water and essentials and barterable items. Then get yourself some gold and silver. But just getting back to that, uh, these banks, ladies and gentlemen, are, are be beginning, it's beginning to really scare me. And when I read um, what this subscriber wrote to me today about now his, his money's been stolen, it, 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 we, we've seen the, the permanent bank closures, the temporary bank closures, the ATM shut down. Really, you, you've got to really be detaching from the system and relying on you. This is the time, there's never been a time in history where it's been so important now to get out of the system, detach, and be as self-sufficient and self-reliant as possible uh, mentally physically, spiritually, financially, you need to be working on all of it. 
After buying cheap Russian oil, India is now setting sights on its coal. Again, things are changing, ladies and gentlemen. China and India are boosting coal imports from Russia. They're, they're going to be using gold. They're going to be using their own currencies. They're going to be using their own SIP system. This is all changing. America is going to be left out. You, you know, we brag about these sanctions. And again, I'm not here to get political. I'm not here uh, to, to talk about what's happening over in Eastern Europe. There's a lot of bad things happening. War is horrible. And I hope this whole thing settles down and, and peace uh, comes into play here shortly um, because People on both sides are, are getting hurt, and we are watching a global reckoning take place with shortages, inflation, uh, food, uh, a food shortage, um, commodity shortages. This is really uh, going to put a lot of pressure and pain on a lot of people around the world. Look at energy in Europe. Look at the energy costs that we're having to pay now. Um, but look, we could drill tomorrow without a doubt, but we're not. That's a whole nother story. But we are watching these countries now look at alternatives to the US dollar. And are they going to really need America at some point when America isn't producing, isn't making anything, the biggest debtor nation on planet Earth? Uh, we have people purposely not wanting to go back to work, not pay their debts back. Uh, other countries are going to prosper. They're going to manufacture. They're going to use their own currencies. They're going back to gold. This is all changing. And America, if America doesn't wake up and get with this, we are going to be left behind. And this is why I believe it's so imperative uh, to be your own central bank and to be preparing for this because your US dollars at some point are going to uh, hold very, very little purchasing power. Your standard of living, if you're not holding real assets, uh, your standard of living is going to collapse. And that's just a fact. But again, US uh, is going to be left out in the cold here. And yet we are warning multiple countries not to do business with Russia, and they're ignoring the warning. America doesn't have the power that it once did. Uh, and countries around the world are beginning to see the weakness in our financial system, uh, the weakness in our military, and they are losing respect, and they are no longer listening to the warnings. So begin to prepare, ladies and gentlemen. Chinese carriers are shipping more empty containers than full ones out of U.S. West Coast ports. Uh, this on CNBC. I thought this was really, really interesting. Two top carriers. You have OOCL from Hong Kong and you have Costco, COSCO, uh, which is headquartered in Shanghai. The two uh, top carriers, they get 15000 a container to come from Asia to America uh, or from China to America, whether it's East Coast or West Coast, 15,000 a container. But they only are getting 1,000 for a container leaving U.S. ports to go back to China. So they would rather just uh, send empty containers uh, back to China so that they can load them up and send them back here. It's more lucrative uh, just to send back empty containers uh, to China. So. Again, we see this massive historical trade deficit that is taking place, and the boats, as we've said in the past, are going back empty. They're loading up, and they're being sent back here with cheap goods uh, and services. And America is going to continue to lose. And how long, how long can a country continue to survive when it's not making anything, not shipping and selling things to other countries across the globe? We're only buying, we're only consuming, and we're doing it with money we don't have. I hope you see the danger to this because this will end very, very bad. And it's already ending badly for millions of people right now as they are uh, dependent uh, on credit cards now just to pay for essentials. How long till those credit card balances uh, over exceed and they get overextended and those cards get shut off. The credit cards will get shut off, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter how many you have. Uh, once one credit card gets shut off, they're all going to get shut off. Black Swan event, top U.S. fertilizer producer hit with rail delays uh, to Midwest. You cannot make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. The world's largest fertilizer company, CF Industries Holding Inc., said Union Pacific had hit it 
with railroad mandated shipping reductions that would impact nitrogen fertilizers such as urea and urea ammonium nitrate uh, shipments to Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Nebraska, Texas, and California. Union Pacific uh, told CF, uh, CF Industries Inc. without advance notice to uh, reduce the volume of private cars on its railroad immediately. This means CF Industries had to decrease shipments by a whopping 20% to stay compliant. Uh, as I wrap it up here, get food, ladies and gentlemen, and get all kinds of food. Uh, if you can put flour and wheat and rice away and beans, uh, I would be buying it by the poundage. Uh, buy yourself as much emergency food you know that you can store for years put that away get yourself extra canned food get yourself water make sure that you have a way to heat water so you can uh, use it to, to for your emergency foods um, make sure you have a place to store it uh, in, in a cool place but ladies and gentlemen listen to what is happening here and, and and why? Why is this being done? I have no idea. But will this have huge ramifications uh, this summer on these crops this spring? Absolutely. Uh, we are going to continue to see a food crisis globally. And America, as obese and overweight as we are, uh, what is it? Fifty-seven percent of this country is overweight or obese, uh, and climbing. Uh, we're we're going to have a very hard time adapting to this food shortage. Um, it, it, this could uh, th this is where the problems begin, ladies and gentlemen. When people begin to not eat, okay, they can tolerate gas, they can tolerate six hundred and fifty dollar Coachella tickets, uh, they can tolerate four hundred dollar Nikes. They just use the credit card, okay, but. It doesn't matter if you have a credit card or cash or what. When there is no food, there is no food. You can't buy it. If there is no food, there is no food. And when people get hungry, this is when we begin to see serious trouble. This is when you don't want to be going out. This is when you don't want to be going to Costco or Walmart. Okay. This is when, when you want to hunker down uh, because things socially can really, really break apart. So, um, we must weather this storm the best that we can. Get yourself some food this weekend, emergency food, canned food, uh, whatever. Get yourself a bag of rice, a bag of flour, um, and, and learn how to uh, preserve this stuff, okay? And, and I cannot stress enough um, the, the importance of getting yourself some gold, some silver, um, we are uh, we're heading into some really uncharted waters here, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are not preparing to weather this storm right now, you're going to be a victim of this storm. So uh, do what just even a little bit is better than nothing. There's a lot of people out there doing as much as they can, um, and there's people out there that have money to to prepare more than others. But Look, even, even if you don't have a lot of money, start cutting something out of your life and start contributing uh, to this war chest that you're going to need uh, for this economic battle. Uh, cut out the $9 lattes. Maybe cut out going out to dinner. Cut out a weekend trip. Uh, maybe, y you know, you shouldn't be driving that car or, or maybe you don't need that big of a house. Uh, right now, people need to maybe possibly downsize get their debts paid off and get ready for what's coming. But there's always a way. You could be cutting something out. Many of these people partying this weekend, spending thousands of dollars, 99.9% .9 of those people have zero gold, zero silver, zero water, zero food, zero barterable items, zero assets, zero training. They are the sheep. They will be the losers, ladies and gentlemen. But see, they want to party. They want to go out and have fun. And then people will judge me and attack me that I'm going to capitalize on these people's losses when people lose homes and cars and RVs. And, and I should feel bad. But yet 750,000 people out here this weekend at a satanic ritual, partying, spending thousands of dollars. Um, I don't know. 
uh, I've had to make the sacrifices, and they, did, they don't seem to feel too sorry for me uh, over the years while, while I've been making sacrifices, living way below my means, and uh, giving up a lot of things in my life in order to put myself in this position. But now, all of a sudden, I'm going to feel sorry for everybody when this storm hits. Um, I'm not. I, I mean, it's, it's tragic, um, but right now, people can prepare and they choose not to. And I cannot feel sorry for people. They have been warned and yet they ignore the warning time and time again. If you cannot see with your own two eyes what is happening out there to this economy, uh, to the direction of this country, uh, what's going to happen to the standard of living, what's gonna to happen to our currency, uh, what's gonna to happen to these markets, stock, bond, and real estate. If you cannot see it by now, uh, you, you will be a casualty and maybe you choose to be a casualty. I don't, I am not gonna allow myself to be victimized by this. I know all of you out there watching this video today are not gonna be victimized by this. You are preparing, the sales are coming, and, and tough times are coming, there's no doubt about it. And if you have the food, if you have the water, you have the barterable items, and you have the debt paid off, this is gonna cushion the blow. Everybody's gonna feel some pain, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a massive depression. It's already begun, and there's no going back. It can only get worse now, and it must get worse, it must collapse in order to get better. How long will it last? How violent and vicious will this downturn be? Nobody knows. But I can tell you this, I am not gonna go in not being prepared, and neither are you. God bless, have a great weekend. Prepare, prepare, prepare.